Over the next 12 to 18 months, I think inflationary pressures are, are clearly going to hit the economy for the, for the reasons I, I've described. So if Australia being a closed economy, shortages of labour, there will be inflationary pressures as, as the economy returns to normal. But over that medium term horizon, I think what we have to remember is that back in 2019, we weren't talking about inflationary pressures. Um, and really these inflationary pressures that have hit our economy are a function of one, that closed economy, and two, the amount of fiscal and monetary stimulus. And already we're seeing governments offshore start to focus on their fiscal, uh, the fiscal state of play. So in the UK, they've announced an increase in the corporate tax rate from 19 to 25 percent in 2023 as they start to address their deficits. And as governments do that around the world, I think those inflation pressures will subside. Yeah, I think what's really interesting and what worries me right now about the implications for investors, if there is an inflationary spike, is this balanced portfolio idea. And so when I talk about balanced portfolios, what I mean is this traditional mix of a 60% allocation to equities and a 40% allocation to fixed rate bonds. And the idea that, that that's based on is the fact that when, um, when inflation is high, equities will increase in value and bonds will sell off. And conversely, um, when equities sell off, bonds will, will rally and you'll have capital gains in your bonds portfolio, which will protect you from that downside. My concern is that in, a, in an inflationary environment, um, that may not be the case. Um, hence, you know, this is why we like that floating rate part of the credit market, where we don't have to take that, take that bet. So what we're, what we're talking to clients about doing is potentially taking some equity risk off the table and some of their fixed income risk off the table and not having to rely on that correlation argument between bonds and equities and having a safe place to, to earn some income um, and have capital stability in their portfolios by investing in floating rate credit. Yeah, there's a really wide and diverse opportunity set in fixed income markets, both in Australia and globally. The particular part of the market that we really like right now is the private credit market. So public credit markets are extremely tight. We're at post GFC levels of tightness. So those returns on public credit are not what they were pre-COVID and certainly um, they're lower than they've been at any time since the global financial crisis. Conversely, in private markets, and, and when I say private markets, I mean effectively we're going out, we're rolling up our sleeves and finding companies to lend directly to. So these are companies, everyday companies that, that you'd be familiar with. It might be you know, a family owned supermarket chain that's looking to expand its, its footprint. Um, it, it might be um, you know, that suburban, sh suburban shopping center that you do your grocery shopping and go to the dentist at. Um, it might be that um, non-bank finance company that, um, that you have a credit card or a, or a home loan from. And so we look at financing those companies directly rather than going into the public bond markets and purchasing exposures through an intermediary. And by doing that directly, you know, we're able to, I guess, exploit some of the inefficiencies that exist in those marketplaces. And so in Australia, there's really lack of alternative lenders to the banking system who provide this type of finance. And so that creates an inefficiency. There's also inefficiencies in the way that that product is delivered to market. And so rather than purely getting paid for credit risk and effectively having an auction um, on, on any loan that we make and you know, the lender being ultimately the person that's willing to lend at the lowest rate, what we provide is certainty of execution to our borrowers. We provide them flexibility in terms and they're willing to pay us an excess return for providing that. And so we really like that part of the market right now. Well, really, we do the same things that we would do uh, on a public company. So we look at the, the business strategy, we look at the profitability of that business, its cash flows um, and, and the future tra trajectory. And then we, we try to build a set of terms around that loan to mitigate any of the downside risks that we identify in, in the business. But what's different about private companies to public is our access to information, our access to management and our ability to drive terms on the loans are far greater. So we can go behind the wall, we can understand in detail what the financials of that business look like. So if you cast your mind back to March of 2020, we were actually having on the ground conversations with our private borrowers and getting monthly and in some cases weekly data feeds of how their businesses were performing through those early lockdowns, which businesses needed support and which businesses were actually doing quite well. And as those businesses rebounded and the stimulus hit the market, we could see which businesses were more impacted than others and which, which benefited most. 
I think right now there's really a bipolar um, market. So if you if you haven't been directly impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, your access to credit is quite strong. Um, you know, there is availability of credit there to you. But if your business has been impacted or you need flexibility in the terms of your financing, that access to finances is challenging. You know, you can think about um, the student accommodation sector where occupancy levels are extremely low or even the um, uh, CBD office spaces where, where occupancy levels are way down. A lot of those businesses are coming up to roll their, roll their financing um, and that, that will be more challenging um, in, in the years to come.